Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, and in this video we are going to be looking at composition in C Sharp. Now before we begin, you might be wondering, what the heck is composition? Well, composition is basically just a term for whenever an object of a class is stored within another object of a class. It's kind of like nesting classes, alright? Um, so basically, we're going to create an object of one class inside an object of another class, alright? So one object will compose another object. All right, so let's look at some code. Now, when we work with composition, we often talk about a has a relationship. While inheritance is an is a relationship, such as a dog is a mammal, composition is a has a relationship. You know, a dog does not have a mammal, a dog is a mammal. Uh, in this example, we're going to go ahead and create an event class. Uh, so, like, if I am having a picnic, right, that's my event, like for maybe a calendar or something like that. And we are also going to be creating a date class. And the date class is going to store the, the, the day, the month, and uh, I, I suppose we'll just do the day and the month just to keep it simple. So we will say that an event has a date. Okay, An event is not a date. An event has a date. And therefore, a date will be inside of my event class. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a couple of classes here. Um, I'm just going to go to Add New Class, and I am going to create... Uh, event. Now I'm not sure if C Sharp's going to let me do this because that might be a reserved word. Let me build this. Make, okay, so now we can use event. Great. All right, and so I am going to do uh, my class event. All right, and we're just going to leave this blank for now. We'll come back to this one here in a second. All right. Um, no, I don't want to say that just yet. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, add new item, another class, and this one is going to be date. So we know. Um, my events are going to have to have a date, and so I'm going to have a private, uh, we'll say, um, int day, and a private int month. We could do string. We're going to work with ints because it's just easier. Um, inside this class, we are going to have our properties. So we'll have public int day with get return day. And set now our set would be like nothing under zero or over uh, 31. Uh, however, we're for simplicity's sake, I'm not going to put any data validation in here because we just want to go fast with this. I don't want to spend my whole time writing classes and not enough time actually showing you anything. So um, get return month and set month equals value. There we go, and I'm just going to create uh, a constructor here. So I'm going to do public uh, date. That's zero argument constructor. I'll come back to it. Public date, and I'm going to require int um, month, uh, and we'll do int day, int month. Inside here, day is going to equal day. Month is going to equal month, and I see that I spelled that wrong there. There we go. And this constructor here is simply going to do this zero zero. Okay, fantastic. Um, we'll also have a two string method, so we'll do public string two string. Of course, I always forget the override, just like that. And we're going to say return. Um, we'll do string.format, I'm starting to like it now that I've been using it for the videos, string.format, uh, day, month, day, month. Okay, uh, so that looks good there, still don't want to save it. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm just going to hit build here and make sure everything's all right. Everything is all right. Um, great. So our date classes is done. All right, that's that looks good enough. We don't really need to add more functionality. Um, so fantastic. Okay. So now my event class. All right. My event class, uh, if you think about a calendar, you're going to have things like um, uh, location, uh, the date of an event, and maybe a little bit of a description. So I'm going to do a private... Uh, string location private 
string description and private date. Uh, we'll just call it uh, date. Yeah, that's simple enough. All right. Uh, and now we go ahead and write some properties here. So I'm going to do public string location and we'll do get return location set location equals value. All right, and I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Copy and paste thing. So we'll say description. If I can spell description anyway. There we go. And we'll just do that. Okay. And then finally, uh, we'll say date. It won't be a string, it will be a date. Um, and we will call it, we'll say date and date. Awesome. Oh, okay. Let's go up. No, still don't want to save it. I'm just going to build it. All right. So now we've got our properties done here. I'm just going to minimize those there. Let's save up some room. Okay. All right. And now let's go ahead and create ourselves a two string method. Let's go public string to string. And we will say return string dot format. We will say um, Location um, then we'll do a uh, slash n description slash n that slash n is going to be an escape character it's going to take us to the next line um, or a new line character I mean and uh, then we'll say date is going to equal yeah, okay, just like that, and then we will say, we will say location, description, and date dot two string. We'll use the two string method of our date to output in a, a, a way that's more readable to us. Okay, so that looks well and good. All right, and so this is fine. We could probably go with this without a constructor or anything. I would have to use the set methods and stuff like that. Um, I did forget the override again. Uh, so that goes there. Um, so there we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, it just hasn't updated. We have the override keyword. Um, but we have to take special care when we're using composition, right? So we can see we've got this date here. And we can use the public methods of the date inside here. We can't use the private stuff, but we can use the public method of the date class inside of this class. Uh, the problem is this. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, create an event. So if I do uh, event my event, all right, um, and normally we would be able to do console.writeline. Even though my event, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I got to do this new event. Whoops. I keep reverting back to my C++ syntax. Uh, console.writeline. Um, we could do my event dot two string. And normally this would work. We'd get empties. We'd get blank. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we run it now. Now normally, yeah, we're going to get it to crash. Normally, we would just get empty strings, right? Our, our constructor would set the string equal to null and the other string equal to null. And we would just, you would say location and there'd be nothing there. And, you know, but it would still run. It wouldn't crash. But this time, we get unhandled exception, null reference exception, object reference not set to an instance of an object. All right, you'll see that error a lot in your programming. And basically what it means is you're using the handle to a class without ever actually creating it. And that's what we're doing, actually. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Uh, I'm going to come back to my event. And you see we have a date, but the constructor for date is never run. I can't do private date uh, date equals new date in here. All right? Um, I do not believe that will work. Uh, it's also just not a really good thing to do. Uh, instead, what we want to do is we want to associate uh, the date with our constructor. We want to build it. Okay, so we're going to create a constructor here. We're going to do public event 
we'll create a new argument constructor we'll come back to it and we're going to say public event uh, let's just I'm just going to create only two normally we'd want to create a couple different ones I'm just going to do the two and so for this one we're going to want a string uh, location a string description uh, yeah spelled that way wrong description an int day and an int month all right just like that uh, and inside here we're going to say uh, location equals location um, des uh, description equals description just can't spell that one today for some reason and here's the new thing this is <clears throat> this is what enables our composition to work I'm gonna say date equals new date and I'm going to pass in day and month we're gonna call the constructor of date and build this object right here all right and of course this no argument constructor is going to do this and it's going to say empty string empty string zero zero just like that there we go perfect now this will work now if I go ahead and run this we won't see a crash now we'll see that empty default that we want to do location equals nothing description equals nothing date day zero month zero okay so that worked that was that's what we wanted to happen all right um, now our composition is working effectively this is something I see a lot too and this is something you have to be very careful with uh, so students do this a lot so let's go ahead and get rid of this here private date date or we'll even leave this here and we will say date date equals new date uh, inside our constructor here all right uh, and if we run this it crashes again all right students do this all the time and I'd like to explain it okay the problem is this is that we have this this date uh, uh, member right here and you think hey well why are we crashing we are creating the object and putting it in date this should work the problem is that you're redeclaring the variable locally locally means between these two brackets as soon as you leave this bracket this object goes away garbage collection clears it out all right the reason it works here is we're referencing something outside of this bracket namely our property which references uh, our members which are global to this class okay by referencing it here like this we're creating it only in between these two brackets and the second we leave these brackets they go at garbage collection picks them up and so when we get here we, to date to string we're saying hey date that's this date this date was never given anything only a local date was giving something all right so avoid doing that if you want to access a member a class object that you are going to instantiate you have to make the class object global to the class by putting it up here all right and not having the identifier there um, so just doing something like this this works just fine we run it and we see that it works okay so I see that a lot this is the structure here with the object or the, the actual variable member declared up top here and we just initialize it in the constructor and then we use it wherever all right uh, and so if I come back to my program here and so let's let's go ahead and do uh, my event equals new event and now we have constructors so I'm gonna do location my house uh, description party and we will say the day will be uh, 1 for April 1st April Fool's Day all right uh, and so we'll do it now we'll run it we'll say the location is my house the description is a party date uh, day one month four we could format the date a lot better but I don't care this is a real simple example um, so there you go that's composition basically when you're using composition uh, the object uh, or, or the, the the member variable is declared like every other variable except unlike every other variable you have to run its constructor if you don't run its constructor you can't use it if you do you'll crash the program all right so the constructor for your, your member objects uh, generally go in the constructor for your class unless you create some special method to do that or whatever but it has to happen you have to call the constructor before you attempt to use it 
if it's if it's even possible that you can accidentally call a method with before it's uh, before it's constructed, you're gonna crash your program. That's why I always say put it in the constructor. Your constructor has to run before anything else, so it's guaranteed to be built. You can't mess it up. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so that's the constructor there. Oh, something I, fr I wanted to show you. Okay, so uh, I almost ended the video without showing you this, and this is rather important. Um, so let's go ahead. I am going to create one more constructor here. I'm going to do a public event, and this one is just going to take uh, string description. Um, oops, and I also want to, I want to do location first, keep them in the right order. It's important that you keep them in the right order. Um, and it's going to call this, and we're going to pass in uh, location and description uh, and zero and zero, just like that. Okay, uh, and we'll go ahead and run it here, and we'll do just like that. All right. So when I run this, we've got my lo my house party day zero month zero. Okay, so let's say I create this event, but I'm not really sure what day it's going to be. All right, so I'm just going to create the event and I'll add the date later. Okay, so now the question is, how do I access the get and set methods of the date class, right, from here? I don't, I, I don't have a date class. I have an event class, and the reason or the answer is our properties. We created these properties, right, uh, right here. Uh, well, these are the properties for our day and month, but here we created a property to access our date object. So that's how we're going to get to it. So if I run this, I see 0 and 0. And I'm actually just going to copy this because I don't feel like ty typing it out. We'll put it down here. Uh, and in between, I'm going to say my event dot date dot day. See how I can do that? All right. So my event dot date, this line right here, returns back the date object. So this is sub. Just imagine we we erase that and then put the date object there right it's kind of like a substitution and then we can do dot to that and now we can do everything we can to the date we're cascading the calls all right and so I can say uh, the day all right and then uh, and then we'll say equals uh, five okay the fifth of my event dot date uh, dot month uh, there we go the, the, the fifth of May all right. Um, oh, hey, that's Cinco de Mayo. I didn't even think about that. Um, so, yes, yeah, it, it would be a great day for a party. Um, and so there we go. And we go ahead and run it. And we've got, first off, we've got nothing in there. But I'm going to rerun it. Now we can see the date is 5, the month is 5. Um, and we can we can do more with that. We can do my event dot date dot two string call the two string method of just the date, not the entire event, things like that. We have full access to the object, uh, all of its public anyway, uh, members and methods uh, when we use the property like that. So um, did want to show you that. Really glad I remember before I finished the video. Um, okay, so that's going to finish it up for composition. It's basically just putting one class inside of the other one and just being sure you connect all your bridges, you know, you plug everything in correctly so that you have full access to everything you need to have access to. Uh, might seem a little complicated uh, the first time you do it, uh, or if you're just seeing it for the first time, trust me, it gets a lot simpler. It becomes very intuitive. Uh, you just basically just need to ensure that everything hooks right, hooks up right. So, um, all right, so uh, thank you for watching.